So uh, my name's Memo Akton and I'm from Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, where I'm based, that should be a simple question to answer, but unfortunately it's not. Um, I am from Turkey. I lived in the UK for the last 20 years, but I've been traveling since 2018. I left the UK two years ago and I was just about to move to Southern California in March of 2020. And as we all know, a global pandemic hit. So I've been unable to go and I'm currently stranded in a quite beautiful remote fishing village in the Turkish Mediterranean um, while I wait for the US consulate to reopen. So I can't complain. Regarding my practice, very broadly speaking, I am ultimately interested in trying to understand the world, trying to understand and make sense of our position in the world and the human condition. And specifically, I focus on working with emerging technologies, particularly computational and algorithmic approaches as a tools and the lens and a medium to create moving images, compositions, small and large scale responsive installations and performances. The work I'm showing is called Deep Meditations, a brief history of almost everything in 60 minutes. It's, um, it's a large scale, immersive, very slow and meditative video and sound installation. I like to think of it as, as a monument that celebrates life nature, the universe, and that subjective experience of it. It is a very abstract film that over the course of 60 minutes takes us on a journey through the birth of the cosmos, the formation of the planets and rocks and the seeds and the spark of life, the evolution, the formation of ecosystems, the birth of humanity, civilization, settlements, culture, history, war, art, ritual, worship, religion, <clears throat> science, technology, everything and most crucially everything is told through the imagination of an artificial deep neural network trained on hundreds of thousands of images that i scraped from Flickr. and these aren't images that are of a particular data set like you know trees or cats or dogs but the very abstract concepts that i searched for before things like god faith worship and of course these concepts don't have very clearly defined objective visual representations. Instead, I ended up training the neural network on hundreds of thousands of images that represent what we humans collectively think that these concepts look like. And this is a very, very, very diverse data set because it's hundreds of thousands of opinions of individuals. And all of this goes into the deep neural network, which is a kind of a melting pot that tries to make sense of all of this data in its own computational way and spews out these abstract amalgamations. And then we look at the outputs and we project back what we see based on who we are. And ultimately what this project is about and what a lot of my work these days is about is reflecting on the idea that both artificial neural networks and the biological neural networks inside our skull see things not as they are, but as we are. So artificial intelligence means quite a few different things to different people. And to me, it means all of them, actually. I don't, there's the most obvious, which is, which is I think what AI means to most people, most of the general public, which is probably kind of steered by sci-fi and you know, we think of robots, we think of Blade Runner, Terminator, Westworld. We think of basically robots. And that's, we could call it, think of it as the dream of AI. But if we dig into that angle quite deeper, we reach the birth of the field of AI um, almost a century ago, which is actually tackling a question which is thousands of years older than that, which is trying to understand the mind. And what AI ultimately is, is a discipline born about a century ago, which is trying to tackle this issue from a new perspective, which is a computational perspective. So in essence, it's trying to understand the mind through hypothesizing, designing, building, and testing computational models of cognition. This is the AI that was born, as I said, about a century ago, but even at its birth, 
there were two motivations behind the birth of AI. One was this, which is the philosophical angle. And then the other was military, uh, which is if we can build computation models of the mind, if we can build intelligent systems, how can we use these systems as a society to our um, to our benefit, which often is at the disadvantage of opposing societies or communities. And so the AI that we have today, the technology that we have today, is very much focused on the latter. It is not necessarily only military, um, but it is definitely a surveillance technology. It's a technology which is designed to make sense of big data. The field of AI that is very dominant today called deep learning, which is where we see all of these breakthroughs, is ultimately a surveillance technology. It is the field of interpreting big data to extract meaningful information from it. I'm mostly inspired, as, as I mentioned, by trying to understand the world and the human condition. I'm inspired by nature. And when I say nature, I don't mean only trees and flowers and the countryside, um, though definitely that too, but I mean the phenomena that gives rise to everything around us. And I mean everything. So that includes the trees and the flowers, but it also includes the nuclear fusion in the heart of the sun, which releases the energy from the mass of the hydrogen atoms and it sends the UV rays down to the trees and the flowers on Earth, which in turn turns them into fuel, which fuels all of life around us. So I'm fascinated by trying to understand phenomena and using computational models as a language to try and make sense of it all.